Welcome to Alchemics, everybody. I'm Tommy Paul. Today, we're making rested cocktails. That is reposado. Now, by law, reposado must be aged from two to 12 months in oak barrels, but master distiller has carta blanca to age in charred or uncharred new or used barrels, which means Many reposados are rested in ex scotch, brandy, sherry, port, but the majority of which in ex bourbon or American white oak barrels, allowing for a wide variety of flavor profiles. So go ahead and throw your reposado margaritas and Oaxaca old fashions in the basura because these are seven cocktails engineered and built around the unique flavor profile of each individual reposado. All right, we're gonna start out with a Mexican firing squad because this is one of the first ever reposado tequila cocktails to ever be published. It is shaken. We'll start out with five dashes of Ingostura bitters. This cocktail was first published by Charles H. Baker, the exotic uh, food and drink writer. So three quarters of an ounce, fresh squeezed lime juice. Match that. Three quarters of an ounce of grenadine. Ours is homemade. And he publishes his 19... 37 book titled Jigger Beaker Glass, drinking around the world. So two full ounces of our Reposado tequila. We're using El Jimador, which is a three month aged Reposado with notes of ginger, but more importantly, stone fruits designed to pair with the grenadine. So we'll give that a shake. Fine strain this to a chilled etched rocks glass. The story goes that this was being sipped uh, before 1937, when Charles H. Baker published it during Prohibition, it was a popular cocktail at La Cucaracha in Mexico City, tossing some new ice cubes, which in essence was a watering hole during Prohibition. Just toss on a wedge of lime. And that is it. That. The Mexican firing squad. All right, next up we have a Rosita. And this is a cocktail that was popularized by Gary Regan, which many people say is why it has the existence of bitters at all. But start out with one dash of Inga Stura bitters. The exact origins of the cocktail are unknown, as is typical. We'll start out with a half ounce of dry vermouth. We're using Delon. Um, it was published in writing by a mysterious group of writers that went by the name of Mr. Boston, 1974. We'll match that with a half ounce of sweet vermouth. That's gonna be Antica. Uh, we do know that it was being sipped uh, long before that in Mexico. And also a half ounce, three equal parts of Campari, our Italian bitter liqueur. And you can liken this cocktail actually to the original tequila 
Negroni, if you will. And so we will pour 1.5 ounces of our Reposado. We're using Partita, which is a six month aged Reposado with notes of honey, pear, and uh, ripe fruit designed to pair with the uh, fruitiness of the vermouth and Campari. I will say, I have seen some modern recipes that switch out the Campari for Aperol, so it's not technically incorrect if you wish to have a little bit more of a uh, soft drinker, if you will. So we'll give this a stir, probably about 45 to 60 seconds. Test this one for dilution. It's perfect. So, strain this chilled rocks glass. For this, I think we'll uh, toss in big ice cube, garnish this. Nice big twist of lemon. That is a Rosita. All right, next up we have a Paloma because this is a Mexican staple, obviously. And we made this cocktail a year ago, actually, on the channel. Uh, with a recipe that I actually like more, frankly, that dates back to the 1950s. And we know that thanks to David Wondrich. And that's uh, a recipe with fresh grapefruit juice from La Capilla, invented by the owner Don Javier Delgado Corona, which I actually like better. But this time we're gonna be making a variation which is a little bit more accepted. Uh, widely, which is with grapefruit soda, but we're gonna start by rimming a chilled etched highball glass with pink Himalayan sea salt. And uh, the main reason why I chose this salt is because most other white salt, there's trace amounts of plastic in it. This that's not the case because uh, it comes from massive blocks from the poles. So set that aside for a second. And this is an adaptation actually from David Wondrich in uh, Killer Cocktails from 2005. So we can build this in our glass. So we're gonna start out with a half ounce of fresh squeezed lime juice and then we'll just go ahead and pour a full two ounce lick of our reposado tequila we're using siete luegas which is an eight month aged reposado very intense oak flavor profile which is going to pair beautifully with citrus and otherwise now, I personally toss in a uh, long cube of ice here, less dilution. And we'll go ahead and top off with our grapefruit soda. Now, if you're south of the border, squirt is probably okay, but unfortunately here in the States, everything's made with high fructose corn syrup. So we're using jaritos which is made with real sugar, that's the main thing. Go ahead and toss in a straw and garnish. A uh, nice big wedge of grapefruit. That 
that's uh, Polona. All right, next up we have a 212. Because this is sort of like a funky Paloma riff. It is shaken. First up, two full ounces of fresh squeezed grapefruit juice. This cocktail is named after the legendary New York area code. And it was invented by Asia Sharp and Willie Shine from Contemporary Cocktail Consulting. They also named this after the formula for the drink. So we'll pour one ounce of Aperol and full two ounces of Partita Reposado Tequila, which is the six month aged reposado with notes of white pepper and ginger, all designed to balance and double down on the sweet and bitter elements of grapefruit and Aperol as well. So ice our tin, give it a shake. Double strain this, chilled highball glass. Toss in a uh, nice long ice cube. Garnish this with a nice big twist of orange. And that is a 212. All right, next up we have a number eight. This is a stirred drink, and as the name would allude to, it is named after the late, great Kobe Bryant. Start out with uh, two dashes of orange bitters. It was invented by Daniel Un, who was the first head bartender at PDT. Uh, New York speakeasy, please don't tell. Uh, half ounce of Baron Jagger honey liqueur. And Kobe was his favorite basketball player. So he named this cocktail after him. Next up, three quarters of an ounce of Los Arcos sherry. This is a uh, amontillado sherry. We're using La Stau. But uh, double entendre is that Daniel named this cocktail also after the number of months that Don Julio Reposado is arrested, which is obviously eight. Um, with heavy notes of vanilla and dark chocolate that all just come together exquisitely with the sherry and the honey. It's quite amazing. You can liken this to a sort of booze Ford Reposado Manhattan variation, if you will. We'll uh, give that a stir. Test this one, proper dilution. It's perfect. And we'll strain this into a chilled coupette. And uh, Kobe, dedicate this video to you. You'll ever, forever live on in our hearts and minds. Garnish this, lemon twist, and through cocktails. And that 
is uh, number eight. All right, next up we have the resting point. This is gonna be shaken and we're making a resting point because it was invented by one of the great actresses to come from the cocktail world. We're gonna start out by muddling one full strawberry. I wanna make sure we muddle it really nice. And her name is Lindsay Nader. And I love this cocktail because I don't like it when people just attach fruit to a classic, but this can be likened to a unique strawberry margarita, if you will. First up, half ounce of lemon juice. Match that with a half ounce of Punta Mess. It's like a uh, bitter Ford sweet vermouth. Match that three equal parts of yellow chartreuse, the uh, French herbal liqueur. And Lindsay said she got her big break in cocktails under Jim Meehan at uh, PDT. LA born, but then moved to New York. And 1.5 ounces of our Reposado tequila in the name comes from the combination of Punt from Punta Mess, which is point, and Reposado, which is rested. That's it for now. Icer 10. Give it a shake. Fine strain this to a chilled cocktail glass. And garnish this with a nice big apple fan and that. It's a resting point. All right, we're gonna finish off with a Mexican gentleman. This is shaken and we're making a Mexican gentleman because it's local to me. Came out of Denver. Now we need to start out with two blackberries in our tin, two raspberries as well, and full strawberry and a slice of orange and give that a muddle. This is a twist on a sherry cobbler, which the earliest recipe dates back to Jerry Thomas's 1867 bartender's guide. But this is a uh, modern variation. Once you've given that a muddle, we start out with a half ounce of Pedro Jimenez sherry, which in essence is the sweetest variety of sherry. We're using La Stau. Match that. Half ounce of Mezcal. We're using Del Maguey Vida. And this cocktail comes from Sean Kenyon out of uh, Williams and Graham in Denver. One full ounce of Manzanilla Sherry, which 
It's on the exact opposite end of the spectrum. This is one of the drier sherries you can get. And last up, match that with Reposado Tequila. We're gonna use Olmeca Altos. Which is a uh, fruit Ford Reposado, which is uh, obviously designed to pair with the uh, cluster of fruit in this cocktail. Got a hard shake. We're gonna fine strain this to a chilled goblet glass. It looks uh, amazing. It's like a viscous, bl uh, blackberry color. Toss in a straw. Serve this over crushed ice. And garnish this with some of your seasonal berries in question. That is a Mexican gentleman. Thanks for watching one of our instructional videos. We release a recipe for free every single day in a different category every week. So click the link in the description to sign up for the Alchemix newsletter. This is where we just send out a quick email every week with a bit more info on the category of the week and all the cocktails so you can make and memorize them. And click right up here to subscribe so you don't miss any of our cocktail videos. And click right here to subscribe to the podcast where we do a deep dive on the category of the week and all the cocktails. I'm Tommy Paul. Cheers.